Hello everybody and welcome to a new player guide. Today we're going to be talking about Trish Scarborough from the Innsmouth Conspiracy Campaign. If this is your first time seeing one of our new player guides, how we work it is we build, well Travis builds a deck uh, that is focused on two copies of the core sets and just the cycle in which the investigator came from. So this is two copies of the core sets and the cycle of the Innsmouth Conspiracy because that's where Trish is from. If you only have one copy of the core set, we highly recommend you pick up a second one or um, proxy the cards you don't have because consistency is key and it'll help you win more. Last but not least, you might have heard about something called the taboo list when you were just starting out. Uh, even just now you might be like, what's the taboo list? Ignore it for the time being. Just play with the cards as printed uh, because that's what's fun and you don't need to worry about that yet. Just play with the cards as they are and that's why we're here. Bryn! I'm going to pass Trish Scarborough to you to talk about her. All right. As you can see, we're an investigator with four book and four foot and twos in our other numbers. Uh, our ability lets us discover extra clues. If there is, if we would discover a clue and there's an enemy at our location, we can choose to either automatically evade it or we can discover an extra clue. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, the star effect does something, but I honestly can't remember what it is. I'm pretty sure it's just one of them plus two effects that has rider text that doesn't matter. Yeah, it rarely triggers, but if for reference, if this is an investigation, you may choose any revealed location. You are now investigating as if you're at that location instead. So like, it's nice when it happens, and sometimes you can get value out of it, but a lot of times you're just like, no, I'm just going to choose my location because I've already been everywhere else. <laughs> this one's the one with the clues on it. Yeah. Uh, although you can use that to hit a location that has a, uh, an enemy mm -hmm. that you're not at, oh. and then either evade that enemy for free without even being there, or discover an extra clue there, assuming that there are clues yeah. there. Uh, our unique cards, we've got uh, In the Shadows, which is what Finn's unique asset wishes it was. <laughs> uh, just zero cost, fast, play only during your turn. Uh, you just disengage from every enemy that's engaged with you, and for the remainder of your turn, they cannot engage you. And uh, you cannot deal damage to them either. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, no you can't, you can't, yeah, yeah, you can't hurt them, but mm -hmm. it's okay. We're not going to do that with our two punch anyway. It's just pretty solid. Uh, it commits for like a buttload of symbols. Yeah. Uh, which is pretty cool. But also sometimes you can just play it to just walk past guys. Mm -hmm. Time they don't exist. Uh, our unique weakness, the Shadow Agents. It's got three fight, three health, and five of fade. Uh, prey, Trish only, Hunter. Uh, when it is engaged with you, you cannot discover clues except by investigating. Forced after it is evaded, discarded. Uh, this is, I think, actually one of the weaker personal weaknesses in the game. Like, it's not very strong. Uh, all you have to do is evade it. You're playing green cards. Can't be that hard. Yeah. It does hit for two for two meat damage though, which is, yeah. yeah you cool. don't want to let it hit you. Could be spooky. But I got eight hearts. You're fine. Yeah, also sometimes can you can once. just be like, if you don't have the things to get clues to, to evade, but you have like a two shroud location and this person shows up, you'll be like, yeah, you can uh, you can beam me in the face and then I'll just automatically evade you and now you're gone, right? So, yep. yeah. All right, Travis, I'll throw these ones to you first. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, we got Cryptographic Cypher. This one's here for the Lightning Bolt ability. Um, you can play it for three money, and then it comes to play with three secrets. The Lightning Bolt ability is exhaust it and spend a secret to investigate your location is plus one shroud for this investigation. And the other ability on it is uh, normal action, you exhaust it and spend a secret to investigate your location gets minus two shroud for this investigation. The Lightning Bolt one is important because you can use it to investigate even when you're engaged with enemies without provoking attack of opportunity, suck up a clue and evade them for free. Mm -hmm. And otherwise it's just like a glorified flashlight. Um, next up, we got this uh, copy of Obsification, which is too money to play. It's fast, and it has three charges. takes up an arcane slot, which you don't otherwise use, I believe. And as a reaction, when an enemy makes an attack of opportunity against you, you can spend a charge to cancel that attack. This fills a similar place to the Cryptographic Cipher, where if you happen to have an enemy, you can just 
slap it into play, investigate, ignore the attack for opportunity, pick up a clue, and evade the enemy, and yeah. then move on with your life. Yeah, and this also like is a great solution to the shadow agents because then you're just like, which Trish is me, right? And then they're <laughs> then they're boned. Yeah, and they give up. They're fighting Except the god breaking and entering, which is like the two previous cards. Um, it's too money to play. You investigate, adding your foot to your skill value for this investigation. So you'll have eight. And if you succeed by two or more, you can automatically evade them at this location. This attack does not provoke attacks, or this uh, action does not provoke attacks opportunity. So you can investigate, you can get your clue. You can evade a guy with the breaking entering. You can evade a second guy with your ability, or you can pick up a second clue and then you just go on with your life. Mm -hmm. um, then we have Faustian bargain. This is here. It may you may think, oh, I put curse tokens into the bag, but we don't have any cards that care about curse tokens. It doesn't matter. Who cares? Uh, it, this is just emergency cash plus. Mm -hmm. um, the curse tokens actually kind of don't matter, and it's just it's just emergency cash, but better in most yeah. cases. So it's it's great too, especially in someone like Trish, because your your main goal in this deck is to investigate, right? And investigating, like, most often is just a basic investigate action. And that's, like, the action that if you draw a curse token on, you're like, I don't care. I'm going to investigate, investigate again, right? So, like, that's yeah, a nice I'll little bonus. Again. Yeah. Sick. Oh, I just talked about this card. The Truth Beckons. <laughs> this is a one-cost <laughs> event that commits for a book and a foot. Uh, it allows you to uh, move to an unrevealed location. Uh, you move one location at a time along the shortest path toward that location until you enter that location. And this effect, if you reveal a location, if an enemy engages you or if your movement is blocked. Uh, it's a way that you can uh, go around the map quicker if you need to. Uh, it's important you also can't play it if you're engaged with an enemy, which luckily with Trish isn't usually a problem. Uh, next up, we got Plan of Action. This is a skill. It commits for a wild, but then depending on when you play it, it commits for something else. So it can defend you in the mythos phase or on your first action, which is generally used for evading the enemy you're with. So it'll put you at six foot when you commit it to a test uh, or um, four brain, which is pretty comfortable in for the mythos phase. Between this first and third, it draws a card and then a fist and a book for the third. Just a nice little card and she's in the art. So that's always a good time. You know the rules, and so do I. Uh, I'll take these ones yeah. too because the last ones didn't really uh, weren't really much. Flashlight. This is a two cost uh, hand slot. I'm not going to go into great detail. It just helps you get more clues from your location easier, reducing the shroud of location for two. It's like committing a an unexpected courage to a test. So now you're like effectively at five, uh, at six versus the games whatever the shroud they had there. Magnifying glass. Fast. You get plus one book while investigating. Takes up a hand slot. Helps you get over the, uh, she has a little bit of that awkward point where as soon as you see like a four book, you're kind of at that thing where you need to be spending resources to get clues because like a lot, you get to a four shot location and you're like, ah, oh, this is a bit tough. I'm gonna have to spend something on this. This helps you get to that point where even now like a, a three shot location becomes very doable for you. Dr. Milan Christopher gives you uh, one damage to horror. Uh, Gives you plus one book, which is super relevant, but the really nice part is when you successfully investigate, you get to gain one resource. So he's gonna give you money to play all the cards that you wanna play. Then we got pickpocketing uh, as a reaction after you evade an enemy, which uh, you get to exhaust pickpocketing to draw a card. And when you evade an enemy with your ability, excuse me, it does trigger the pickpocketing as well. So now not only your ability also says draw one card, which is pretty sweet too. Uh, also, just evading an enemy and drawing a card after is nice for your economy as well. Bryn, I'll throw these ones to you. All right, we got Sneak Attack. It's two costs, deal two damage to an exhausted enemy at your location. Exhausting enemies should not be that difficult for you. And this is just a nice way to give whoever is, actually, is like sorting the monsters out a little bit of breathing room. You can use it to kill any annoying, sticky enemies who you'll have to deal with turn after turn, like low, low hit point enemies with Hunter, or even just to poke, uh, poke a big hit point enemy, so maybe it costs one less bullet for somebody else to kill. Uh, we got Working a Hunch, which is two cost and fast. Play only during your turn. Discover one clue at your location. This card is pretty sweet because uh, you can 
just play it while engaged with an enemy to either dis discover two clues or discover a clue and evade the enemy for free. Basically just pretend he doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. I've got deduction, which is a classic. Commits for a book. If the skill test is successful while investigating a location, discover one additional clue at the location. So with this one, if there's an enemy at your location, you can discover three clues for one action, uh, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah. Less action spent investigating, the better. <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> it's just math. It's just math. Uh, we got guts. It commits for two brain symbols. Uh, max one for committed per test, and if the test is successful, you draw a card. Uh, this card doesn't actually do anything with the other cards in our deck. What this card is here to do is to protect us from the Mythos deck, as typically when the Mythos deck is trying to hurt you, it's going to make you make a brain test and then do something bad to you if you fail, often gauged by how badly you failed. This lets you run the test at four, or at six, if you've also got a plan of action. Mm -hmm. So you can probably just not suffer the consequences, or at least suffer less of them. Mm -hmm. Sick. Oh, Travis, you think you got these ones? <laughs> uh, yeah. This is Mal Dexterity. It gives you two feet test when you evade something, and then if you succeed, you get to draw a card. Uh, four plus two is six, which is greater than four, so that's pretty good. And you don't really have to spend, uh, don't really have to spend a card on it because it replaces itself, so that's nice. And then we got the Unexpected Courage here, which it doesn't draw you a card, which makes it a little bit worse than the other ones, but you can use it for two of anything. You need to, you need to get more book, then you can have more book. You gotta have more foot, you can have more foot. You need more brain to go with your guts, then you can, you can have that too. It's it's just it kind of does everything. Heck Great yeah. card, man! I would love to cut all of our videos of this of us just explaining <laughs> unexpected courage to see how we differ from video to video. <laughs> all right, we got some upgraded cards. Uh, Priest of Two Faiths is a one cost, one experience, two damage, two horror ally that commits for a foot, and then as a reaction after it enters play, add three bless tokens to the chaos bag. Ah, like a true man of God, he comes in and brings a blessing. However, also there's a twist. Something evil is hiding beneath this man. At the end of the upkeep phase, you must either add one curse token to the chaos bag or discard Priest of Two Faiths. So this guy, uh, his job is to unfortunately die. <laughs> like, uh, he's here to add three uh, blessed tokens to the bag if you want to uh, do that little boost. And then he offers a bit of soak for when things go south. This is really good as well with her ability because you can um, have Priest of Two Faith take the attack of opportunity and then either evade that enemy or get an additional clue. And then he's dead and then you get three blessed tokens in the Chaos Bag for only one resource, which is it's, it's one of the better rates that you can do. Like he does cost one experience, but he also soaks an attack of opportunity for you. Uh, this guy is also the primary driver of the curse tokens for yes uh, the, the green deck, if the rogue deck, if you want to lean into that really hard. And I think we're going to be seeing cards that go with this in the upgrades. Like there's going to be some stuff there, so then we'll you'll be able to really see if you want to go that way with the limited collection. Uh, Tristan Botley, he does take up an ally slot. He's a five cost, two experience, commits for a wild, three damage, two horror. After your turn begins, choose two skills until the start of your next turn. You get plus one to each of those skills. So depending on what you get, you're going to probably always choose book in this. Um, and then you can choose foot or brain depending on what the what's existing to you in your current spot. If you have an enemy with you, choose foot because then you can maybe evade them. If you have a way to deal with that enemy by getting a clue and you're just going to leave them there, choose brain. Um, it's just a nice little boost that he can give you to the stat you need when you need it. As a reaction as well, after any skill test ends in which a total of three or more curse or bless tokens were revealed, play him from your hand at no cost. Have either of you guys played this guy before? No. I can tell you right now, this dude does not like coming out into play on that ability. <laughs> uh, yeah, I believe it. So you should expect that this man costs five. 
you're gonna read that and be like, this guy's sick, he costs nothing. He's gonna cost a lot of money. He's gonna cost you five. It could happen, it could. I'm not gonna say it can't, but it won't. <laughs> it can't. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think it matters a lot uh, what your teammates' decks look like. Yeah. Yeah, if you're going on like uh, everyone's going cursed or blessed and you have 20 tokens in there, Tristan's just, he's like, put me he's in, coach. The, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm yeah. waiting. But otherwise. He's the he, freest thing you've ever seen. Yeah, he does not want to play. It's surprisingly difficult. But actually, it shouldn't be surprising. But trust me, it is. Uh, we got Riastrad. Uh, it's a zero cost event. Commits for two fists, one experience. Fight. When you initiate this attack, add up to three curse tokens to the chaos bag. For each curse token added to the chaos bag, you get plus one fist and deal plus one damage for this attack. So this on its own is just going to put you up to five, which could is a nice little like that's a good boost that you can probably get there. However, the curse tokens are going to be minus two each, so just something to be aware of that this like it could go wrong. Um, if you have other things or you're using a weapon, excuse me, if you're like if you're um, Sorry, not a weapon. If you have things that boost your fist, like a Delilah O'Rourke, it becomes more possible to get this working. But just uh, if you're... The real treat on this card, ultimately, is that it adds three curse tokens if you're going that route. This card is like an emergency button Yeah. for this deck, where you don't necessarily want it on its own, but it combines very, very well with something like Justify the Means. Yes, definitely. Definitely. And you just get to pop something with four health or whatever. I forget how hard the, how high the scales. Uh, four yeah, four four damage yeah. So four health. Uh, last up here we got Gius, which we're now going to officially refer to yes. as Goose for the rest of this video. Uh, yeah. This is an exceptional card. You get plus one to all your stats. Wow, three five three five. Forced. After an enders play, make a promise using the following formula. I shall not draw, play, or commit any cards. You choose one of them during each of my turns. If you break this promise while well, Goose is in play, the Goose hears and sees all, discard it and add 10 curse tokens to the chaos bag. So, now we're going to talk about the two ways this card can work. The easy one that you see is that it buffs all your stats, and then that's great. Um, the promise you make really depends on what you, where you are in the game, right? The draw one, reasonably, actually, is pretty easy for this deck, assuming you don't have a pickpocketing in play. Because as soon as then you're like, I want to draw cards off my pickpocketing and only activates during my turn. Then your manual dexterities you just don't do during your turn or use it on other players. Because only your turn is like in the three actions, including any bonus actions or lightning bolt effects you trigger, that happen during your turn. Um... Committing cards, there's a lot of cards you want to commit here. Playing cards, you probably want to play the cards, but maybe late in the game you're not going to play anymore, and the Goose, that's a fine promise to make. However, the flip side of Goose is that um, you can just break the promise and add 10 curse tokens to the bag if you need the curse tokens for synergy. Or if you need them for Tristan to be great. Yeah, the ultimate combo. Just spend six, <laughs> play Goose... Tristan, you're good. Get in there. Uh, I'm not too actually aware of the curse payoffs for green, um, but this is great if your Amanda Sharp is trying to figure out her uh, cryptic grimoire or whatever it is, and she's like, I can't get 10 curses, and you say, worry not, let me call the goose, right? So there's things you can do there. Brent! She promised you wouldn't do that. I lied. <laughs> Honk, honk. Bryn, uh, I'll yeah. pass these ones to you. All right, we've got Justify the Means. So this one is a skill that we can we are may commit to any type of skill test. As an additional cost to commit it, we have to add curse tokens to the bag equal to the skill test's the difficulty. The skill test automatically succeeds. So we can use this to do anything. Wow. At all. But don't use it to do the easy things. <laughs> Like, <laughs> why not? Because it's bad. Either either way, it's bad. Uh, either you're not adding very many curse tokens, and that was the goal. In which case, like, well, you know, you're out one of your better ways to add a big pile of curse tokens to the bag. Or two, uh, you could have just done it without this. And uh, maybe maybe that would be better. However, you can use this to do things that should be impossible for you. 
such as punching things or you know succeeding in a brain test that could explode you. Mm -hmm. You can't just pass. Mm -hmm. uh, we got under surveillance. It's a three cost event. It's a tactic and a trap. Uh, you attach it to your location, like that one per location. Forced after a non elite enemy ent <laughs> enters attached location, you discard it, and then uh, you, know, you may you automatically evade that enemy and discover clues at his location at the location because. You were wiretapping him? Yeah. Ooh, what yeah. is this ghoul trying to say? I don't know, Mom. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's working out. I think me it's... and Wendy are going to break up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it's pretty all right. Uh, you kind of got to know where the monsters are going. Mm -hmm. So maybe like you got enemies with Hunter or even your weakness, uh, Shadow Agents, following you around. Yeah. You know where they're going to be. Then this under surveillance probably is starting to look real good. Uh, one thing as well, um, the her ability doesn't care if the enemy's exhausted. So you yep. could oh. um, you could also then just like have them come here. They get exhausted and then they don't stand up the next upkeep phase. So you can get a bunch of clues from your location when that happens as well. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty neat. Takes a little bit of work to set up, though. Mm -hmm. uh, we got skeptic, which is a skill commits for a while. Uh, during the skill test, you treat the modifier for every blessed and curse token you draw as plus one instead of its normal effect. So you know, like maybe there's ten curse tokens in the bag because you have offended a goose. <laughs> 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 nah, it don't um. matter. It's just a just a solid way to mitigate the curse tokens that you may or may not have been loading the bag with, mm -hmm. or to spit in the face of one of your teammates who's putting blessed tokens in the bag to help you. Like, look, I don't need this. Yeah. Uh, we got the lucky penny, which is probably my favorite. Like, I, I I'm gonna, I'll say I love it now, but I bet you in a, like less than a year I'm gonna hate this card. But it's a two-cost asset. It's exceptional. It's got a forced effect. When you reveal a curse token or a blessed token during a skill test, you flip a coin. If it's heads, you pass. If it's tails, you fail. Uh, it's uh, It feels like a very green way <laughs> to deal with curse tokens. They don't matter anymore. It's, it's just... Sometimes, sometimes it just works. They all just become something else. Yep. Yeah. It's a. Mm -hmm. It's a. It's a card. I, I. I bet you. I bet you six months. Six months. I'm gonna hate this card. Yeah. Once you always roll tails. We got Eye of the yeah. Dejin next. So this is a, a hand slot, two cost, two experience. Commits for two book. Uh, it's exceptional. So when you initiate a skill test during your turn, exhaust Eye of Dejin. Set the base skill value to five for this test. If a blessed token is revealed during this test, ready it. If a cursed token is revealed during this test, you may take an additional action this turn. I think, um, never mind what I think. I was about to say, this seems like a great defensive card for Trish. Uh, I think this one, you kind of are like, depending on like, I'm gonna get five book or five foot because those are the skills I'm using during my turn. Or maybe five fist if I need to punch something. I mean, obviously this is really good with that Rhea Strad card. Um, and then you're like, I'm expecting a curse token, so I'm going to just get an additional action out of this. Um, I think that's kind of like the point this serves in a Trish deck. It's not mm -hmm. like something like obviously in someone like Preston, this can get really juicy. But I think in Trish, this is like if you want to take advantage later in the campaign and you have the experience, this could do something with that. Um, but it's kind of just like another piece of the curse puzzle that exists in green. Yeah. Yeah. It does also do like a very good job of eating curse tokens out of the bag. Definitely. If you know, maybe you've offended a goose and need to uh, need to try to make that right. Yeah. We got False Covenant, permanent limit one covenant per deck, so you can't put both False Covenant and Blasphemous Covenant, covenant in your deck. As a reaction, when an investigator at your location reveals a curse token during a skill test, you can exhaust False Covenant, cancel that Chaos token, return to the token pool, and reveal another. You get to say, no, goose! This curse shall not strike me down today. <laughs> 
And then the goose says, how about another one? Um, so one thing as well, the canceled chaos token is returned to the token pool, not the bag. So it eats the curse token. It says, see you later, curse token. You never existed in the first place. Which I think is a very fun, flavorful way for green to deal with curse tokens. They just cover their ears and go, I'm not listening. <laughs> Uh, Blasphemous Covenant is next. Uh, same thing, one covenant, permanent. When Investigate Location reveals a curse token during a skill test, you can exhaust Blasphemous Covenant. Uh, treat the token's modifier as plus one instead of its normal modifier. After this test ends, return that token to the Chaos Bag. This really depends on what you want out of your curse tokens. Do you want to say no, or do you want to take advantage of them? That's kind of like where this happens, where your choice between false and blasphemous happens. Next up, we got Gaze of Oraksh. This is a two cost, two experience, spell cursed event. Reveal seven random chaos tokens in the chaos bag. Deal a total of one damage plus one additional damage for each curse or an auto fail token revealed divided as you choose among enemies at your location. This attack does not provoke attacks of opportunity. We just went on a big talk about this in our Amanda Sharp video. Um, but this card is designed not to, sorry, not, I can't say what the card was designed for. But ultimately, but what you should be looking for this card for is like, chip damage or like um maybe like poking a bunch of small things at a location you're gonna like depending on the number of curse tokens you have in the pool will determine how good this card is and you can get like two to three damage is probably the most reliable thing you can get from this but even then as we know with tristan sometimes it just doesn't happen travis i'll pass these ones to you uh, this is starting off trouble. This is a great yellow curse enabler. Also, just like a good card in general. Cost one experience to put in your deck. Zero money to play. As additional cost to play it, you add curse token to the bag equal to your location shroud value. And then you just get to discover two clues. Um, great for triggering Trish's ability. Great for getting clues off high shroud locations. Good card in general. Great for supporting your curse synergies. Then we got Fey, which is a uh, Pretty nice skill to have in your deck, to be honest. Cost one experience to buy, and that counts for brain and two wild. And if a curse token is revealed during the skill test, you can return Fae to your hand when the skill test ends. This one is particularly nice for Trish because it helps protect her fragile brain score. Um, and sometimes she just get it back. Yeah. Sick. Bryn, why don't you close out with the upgrades from the core set? Yeah. The upgraded magnifying glass. This one is the same as the other one, but it costs zero. And as a lightning bolt, if there are no clues at your location, you can pick it up. Uh, nothing flashy, just generally more efficient. Uh, we got the cat burglar. <laughs> He's a four costed ally, two two soak, gives you plus one foot. As an action, you can exhaust cat burglar to disengage from each enemy engaged with you and move to a connecting location. This action does not provoke attacks of opportunity. So hypothetically, you end up, uh, you've been stacking up a whole bunch of enemies because you've been evading them and, and not uh, not fighting them. Cat bug just buys you out. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter how many there are. You can just walk away. And lastly, we've got Sure Gamble, which is a two-costed event fast play when you reveal a Chaos token from <laughs> uh, the Chaos Bag. Whatever the text for that actually is. You switch, you switch the token's modifier from a negative to a positive. Yeah. Very green. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah you, just, you just get the G. Yep. The game's like minus five, and you're like, well, like, what about plus five, though? And they're like, good point, good point. Yeah. Valid point. <laughs> Why All not right. just have plus five? Well, that is Trish Scarborough. Um, she's fun. I like her. I think she's nice. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, I think you can get a lot of action efficiency out of her. She's a very fun green character, and I think you'll have fun playing her. If you have a, a bigger collection and you're wondering what else I should do, we normally don't say this, but her and Lola Santiago are like BFFs. So 
Get Lola Santiago as part of your upgrades as well. Just trust me on that. We normally don't say that, but I think just it works so well with Trish. And sometimes you do wonder. Uh, on this note as well, we know, I know these are limited deck builds. We do have expanded ones coming in the future, probably in like near the start of the fall. We know people are asking for them. They will come. We have a lot of stuff we have to get through first, but in like late summer, early fall is when we start getting to those. So buckle up and get ready for that. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys on Saturday where we're going to be talking about Dexter Drake, the magician. We'll see you then. Have a good one. And as always, GG's.